let's uh, quickly look at the box it's red in color i think uh, microchip has uh, changed the color from the black to red and then here you have the name of the board and the evaluation board number and also you have the barcode let's do a quick unboxing of this box to make sure that i don't have any uh, static i got my esd strap on let's open up this box and see the contents right the board is nicely packed inside the uh, anti-static bag or static shield let's open it up static shield in bag nice very nice microchip has given a pin header so uh, you can uh, solder the pin header onto this board to uh, connect this uh, board to the breadboard using this pin header looks like the pin header it's it's it has the gold finish as well they have given a proper gold uh, finish uh, pin header rather than uh, these uh, cheap pin headers with uh, lead finish however microchip has not supplied uh, with a USB cable uh, I think it's just the board that they have supplied but that's fine it is easy enough to find one of these uh, USB cables I think it is for the cost they want to uh, keep the cost at a very minimum so you know a lot of people can use this board uh, without paying too much money let me try to get a good shot on this uh, board yeah it has a switch this is the micro AVR micro I don't know whether you can see it but it's AVR uh, 128 DB 128 stands for 128 kilobit uh, flash memory and it also have an integrated debugger so uh, you can just use the USB and program the board right there's a LED here so uh, we, we can try to flash this LED using the IDE it is also nice to see all the uh, pins are marked with their uh, port numbers if you want to take out a signal from one of these pins you can easily use one of these uh, uh, holes if you look at the back of the board those pins are marked with the corresponding numbers as well right uh, you can see there are two, two crystals on the board one is a 16 megahertz crystal that's actually the main clock for this processor and you also have a 32 kilohertz processor that must be a 32.768 kilohertz processor to supply the low power oscillator a clock signal to, uh, to this uh, AVR chip uh, let's measure uh, measure the size of the board 84 millimeters long 20.3 uh, millimeters in width uh, quite a nice little board and also you can see all the pads are gold plated so it's very easy to uh, solder uh, these pads it's good the microchip had used gold instead of uh, lead for these pads okay uh, let's try to uh, do a small piece of code using MPLAB XIDE and try to uh, flash the onboard LED of the development board uh, mind you, uh, this is the first time I'm trying a uh, AVR device on MPLAB X IDE, uh, but I have quite a uh, experience with MPLAB X IDE, but that is with uh, PIC devices. I would follow the steps that I would normally follow to do a project for PIC microcontroller. So I go uh, file, new project, standalone project, next uh, device. So I will go, I'll type AVR. 128 db 48 it's there i have plugged in our avr 128 uh, db 48 curiosity nano board and you can see under tools you can see uh, that uh, development board here so i would click on that and next so obviously it's using xc8 compiler so that means the latest xc8 compilers are supporting both pick devices and AVI devices so I will choose XC8 uh, compiler and I'll, I would choose next and then uh, this is where you put your project name so what I will do I will write AVI128DB48 
uh, first all right um, and then go finish okay we have done the project but we need to do the uh, source files um, in this case I'm going to use MCCE to to do my uh, program so click on MCC and it will ask you to save the MCC configuration file I'll go save at once I can see all these settings are a bit different than the PIC microcontroller because obviously the AV architecture is different uh, but we will see we will uh, work through and uh, we will find a way to set this up so the first thing I would do is I'll go to system module and uh, when you go to system module uh, you can see the clock control uh, I'm going to use the external crystal uh, 16 uh, we saw uh, there's a 16 megahertz crystal connected to the AVR microcontroller so I'm going to use external clock here external clock frequency can be between 1 hertz to 20 megahertz but I'm going to put here 16 megahertz right so we have set up our clock uh, watchdog is off that's fine brownout detector is off and then um, voltage level monitor we won't touch it all right so next thing is to set up our io input outputs so in this case we can go and have a look at our schematic of the board i have opened up altium design files uh, here microchip also releases uh, all the development files or uh, the pcb files needed for this board so i have opened that project here and now there we can look at the LED here we go this is the user LED and um, the user LED is connected to port B BB3 right and also in order to light up the LED we need to uh, make this PB3 pin low having that in our mind we go back to our MPLAB X IDE and then we make PB3 an output you go to pin manage grid view and uh, output GPIO output uh, you go until you find PB3 that's port B and B3 you make that uh, output right so you have made that an output and then um, what you would do you go to pin module and once you go to pin module you can see the pin that you have just configured you you can change the custom name here or you can leave it as it is but I'm going to change this custom name to LED and um, output so basically this is saying uh, that you have configured your pin as output Where at startup we don't want the LED to light up and um, if you go back and if you look at your design you can see uh, to light up the LED you need to make this pin high so at startup you need to make your uh, output low and then you also have invert enable so what that does is if this is enable if you uh, make the pin high uh, automatically uh, the output will become low if you if you put one there the output will be zero right and pull up enable if you want if you need the pull ups so i think uh, we are good to go we are, we, we are good to do the uh, code generation uh, we'll see what else we have here I think that's fine so we go we generate the code you can see the code generation files here now you you click on MCC and it will switch back to our project and then I go to main so this is where you write the file so now if you go to system initialize you can see all these files have been uh, created by MCC or microchip code configurator here I'm going to toggle the LED so to look at all the macros that a microchip code configurator has done you need to go to pin manager.h click on that and you can see all the macros we have only one pin set up so uh, that is called LED and uh, MCC has given all these macros uh, to control that pin in case if you have another pin set up as LED1, you would see another set of macros for LED1. We are interested in toggling the LED, so we are going to use LED toggle macro, this one. And uh, we 
we control C for copy and we go to the main and we will paste it there I'm also going to include a delay uh, here so we can uh, properly see LED toggling so the the correct way to include a delay in AVI device is delay millisecond uh, just um, delay millisecond with only one uh, underscore and you can put 100 millisecond there and for this delay to work properly um, you need to include this uh, in the code so I will include that so if I build that yeah that builds fine when I load this code to the uh, board it didn't work it turns out that the microchip or the MPLAB XID doesn't set the direction bit for the, this device so we are going to do it manually so we can do it manually here or either go to uh, these macros and look at a macro to set the direction bit to output you can see here uh, if you use this macro you can set the direction bit to a output so we will use that macro control C and just before we go to into the while loop we put the macro there okay let's let's uh, build the code and see whether the LED flashes good yeah we are successful the LED is flashing this time we are going to write a code to blink the LED of the development board using microchip studio this is formerly the Atmel studio as you know microchip acquired uh, Atmel uh, way back and now all the Atmel's products are getting branded as microchip uh, so when you come here uh, you can click file new rather than clicking project you can click on Atmel start project so Atmel start project is the uh, uh, studio version of uh, MCC so when you come here you can enter the device name in our case it's AVR128DB48 right so when you come to this stage you need to set up your clock so uh, click on clock control and go through uh, your configuration so main clock configuration um, at the moment internal high frequency oscillator is selected as the main clock I don't uh, want that I want the external clock with uh, the 16 megahertz external clock as the uh, main clock so I will click on external clock I will not touch these settings then I will move to this setting here so this is actually enabling your internal high frequency oscillator configuration since I'm not using internal high frequency oscillator configuration you can safely disable it you can also disable the third one uh, because you are not using the internal uh, 32.768 crystal uh, you can also disable it doesn't matter if you want to keep it enabled because you are not using it and that's it right so now we move to clocks so this will give you a, a picture how the external clock is connected to your CPU at the moment external clock is connected to the main clock and the CPU RAM and NVM. NVM is the non-volatile memory. Everything is fine except uh, external clock is 8 megahertz but as you know our external clock is uh, a 16 megahertz crystal. So what we will do you can click on this cog wheel, click on enable high frequency oscillator, frequency range, select maximum 16 megahertz external frequency and for crystal frequency we will enter 16 megahertz rather than 8 megahertz close yeah so you can see now the cpu is running at 16 megahertz that's fine now uh, we need to set up our input outputs so you go to pin max here uh, we know we need to set bit 3 of port b as output so click on that pb3 i'm going to give that a label i'm going to make it led and pin mode is where you set the direction of that uh, pin or of that bit so in this case it is a digital output initial level is high because we want the LED to be switched off at startup yeah everything looks fine we can generate the code 
right here is where you give a project name to your project and also location for it to save that's fine compiler is xc8 uh, you can also click on gcc but i prefer xc8 okay click ok once uh, that is done you can click on main you can see microchip studio has given you a framework to write your code when you come to this stage you should look for macros so those macros are here in this uh, .h file uh, atmel underscore start underscore pins dot h click on that you can see as before it, they have given us some macros so in this case we need to toggle the led so led toggle level here we go that's that's our macro take that copy and go back to your main paste it inside the while loop we also need a delay so we go we delay obviously when you click underscore uh, it goes to autocomplete and it will show us the functions that you can write in this case we are going to use underscore delay underscore millisecond we will put 100 there for 100 milliseconds and then um, we need to go here and then click on that and uh, tool at the moment nothing is set up so we go and set up our tool so that's our curiosity boards debugger so we'll click on that and then uh, once that is done we will go back to uh, your main and then click on this icon for it to build and program uh, there are some errors okay let's go through this and uh, we'll look for the errors so the error is undefined reference to delay uh, underscore delay underscore millisecond that's an undefined reference okay i think we need to include uh, utilities here delay dot h as before right let's build it and see whether we can build it without errors yeah so uh, succeeded it asks you to upgrade your tool so click on upgrade so you you, you have to do this only once close right and then click on that icon again and here we go the board is working fine 